up for our very special guest today, Kevin Chamberlain. Tell us about um, your high school experience. Were you in drama in high school? Yeah. Did you? I grew up in uh, South Jersey, actually right near uh, where she lives, and I uh, in a little town called Moorestown, and we had a really active community theater. And my first play, uh, we had just moved there. We had moved around a lot when I was a kid, and I wanted to um, make friends, and it was a great place, as you know, to, uh, the theater's a great place to make friends. And I, and I played piano I, uh, from a very early age, so I wanted to do uh, some musicals, and um, I saw they were having auditions for the Parks and Recreation production of uh, Tom Sawyer, oh, and, nice. I, and I got cast as Huckleberry Finn. And then each summer I would do another, we did uh, Oliver and Wizard of Oz, I played the Cowardly Lion. Yeah. Right. And I got my first Broadway show in 1993, and I was in the chorus, I started out in the chorus of uh, a musical called My Favorite Year. And uh, it was actually a big flop. It closed about a month after we opened. And, uh, but it's, it started my relationship with Steve Flaherty and Lynn Ahrens. Does anyone know who they are? Mm-hmm. I do. <laughs> Anyone out there? They wrote Susical. And so when they were writing Susical, they thought of me because I had done, uh, I was in the course of my favorite year and I was physically right for the elephant, <laughs> being a big guy. And so they thought of me and so I did all the original readings and workshops of Susical. And uh, so I never actually had to audition for Susical. They, That's amazing. Um, yeah, we just did workshop and reading after workshop and reading and uh, and then all of a sudden we were opening on Broadway. So tell us about your experience in My Favorite Year and how it's probably no surprise that all of a sudden you were cast as Horton. You know what yeah. was the, the relationship that you build with with, um, with those um, two people? One of the things that uh, I thought was really important as being in a musical being a musical theater actor is knowing how to read music being musical you know there are a lot of people who are um, in musicals, but they aren't really, they don't have a musicality about them. Mm. Um, you have to really know, and uh, really know musicals uh, historically. Um, I, I was a, a, a font of information on any music. I was obsessed with musicals. And so when I was working with the musical director, um, I, could re I could be given a piece of music and I could sit and I could sight read it because I played piano, and, um, and I, 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 I always thought knowledge is power. So as soon as someone goes, oh, that person can read music, I'm gonna use him for uh, a project I'm doing because I need people to learn material really quick. Mm. And so that, more often than not, is what got me more work. Okay. Uh, what was your favorite part of doing Sousa Call? Uh, we did the original workshop up in Toronto, and it was done like story theater, where everything was about the imagination, and if we needed a pool, we'd take out a, a blue piece of cloth mm -hmm. and lay it down on the ground, and that was a pool. And, and that was really how the, the show developed. And actually, when we moved to Broadway, uh, they actually literally had a, a tub of water, and it kind of ruined the experience. Right. Because the show is about the imagination. And I learned from that show more than any other show that uh, theater really is about the imagination. You want the audience to fill in the blanks. What was that transition like for you from doing stage onto going onto, from, to going um, onto television? Well, the nice thing about, I've, I've done a lot of movies and um, when you're transitioning from theater to movies, uh, it's all about uh, bringing it down for the camera and everything is, you know, in the eyes, and it's very, you, you don't really feel like you're acting when you're, when you're doing a movie. It feels like you're just mumbling. Right, right. <laughs> like you're just being. But what's nice about Jesse is that it's a sitcom. It's, it's what we call a multicam, and we're on a stage, and there's four cameras, and there's an audience behind the cameras. So it's the perfect marriage of, of TV and theater, and live theater. We, uh, we shoot in front of an audience about 40% of the time, because uh, we do have animals on the show, and when uh, the animals are on, they can't, you can't have a live audience. We have right. a seven foot long Japanese water monitor lizard. He's very dangerous. He has 2,000 teeth. 
it seems like anything a show could have, your show has. Yeah. What's the most embarrassing thing that's happened on stage that you can tell us about? <laughs> um, the most embarrassing thing, I've had my pants fall down. Oh no. <laughs> Yeah. Literally, you. I had um, I had a pair of pants that had suspenders, and I was doing a quick change, and I put the pants on, and I forgot to put the suspenders up over mm. my, and then I had to put a jacket. I was a cop, and I'm dancing and dancing, and all of a sudden my pants are down around my. No. <laughs> <laughs> what has been your favorite episode so far on Jesse? Oh, good one. My favorite episode, what? Well, I have two. One was. Um, uh, when you go into Bertram's bedroom and you find out he's a hoarder. <laughs> that was really fun. Um, and uh, one called Panic Room, where the kids are in the panic room. That is so brilliantly written and so funny. It's almost like a farce. Um, and uh, the kids get, get locked in the panic room oh, of okay. their wealthy apartment. <laughs> of course they have a panic room. Of course. Wow. Sometimes I'll get notes from parents, and I remember this one where he just said, our family gets together and watches Jesse. It's the only time we all sit in the same room and laugh together and cry together, and, and uh, we just wanted to write you a letter to thank you. Oh. <clears throat> getting, oh, I'm getting a little choked up <laughs> just uh, uh, talking about it, because it's really lovely, because you, know, you do your work every day and you don't really realize uh, who your, uh, what hearts you're touching. Mm -hmm. you know? And my question is, what should people my age do to build our acting careers? Mm. Do plays. Do plays in your, in your community theater and in summer camps. And, and oh, any chance you, you can get up on stage, take it. Always say yes, I'll do it. Never say no. Get up there and, and, and do it. And every time you perform, you learn. Uh, you learn how to land a joke. You learn how to be funny. And cultivate your imagination. Go to that time when you were f five years old in the sandbox playing, uh, you know, playing war or playing with, with your dolls and stuff. That's what I try to get to, that place, every time I act. I want to be a little five-year-old and that, tapping into that kind of imagination. Mm. That's where you can find the, the joy. If we can give a huge round of applause. <laughs>